I'm making noise before I come on screen so that it uh, sounds like I was prepared for the end of that. That's it. We're started. We're up and running. Welcome again to all the faithful. This is the 30th, the big three zero, which I believe is Pearl, as somebody's already commented. Uh, welcome on the 30th show from Ian Bowden tonight. It's going to be a pearl of a show. You're absolutely right, Ian. Hello, Diane Thomas. Hello, Steve the Juggler, et cetera, et cetera. Nathan's here. Greeting pun fans. Uh, loads and loads of people watching. Ben Emmett, evening all. Leighton L. Barb's Barber, evening all. Absolutely wonderful to have you all with us. The viewer numbers are rocketing up as we speak on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, whatever it is that we do without furtherness, I think it's ado, isn't it? Without further ado, your host for the evening, the immaculate Mr. iMac Pun, Ian McDonald. Good Ooh. evening, Rob. How are we? Hi, mate. Yeah, um, I, I look, uh, I've got myself on a bigger screen than normal, so I realize how rough I look. So I apologize for that. It looks like I've just hacked my way out of the Borneo jungle. I'm sorry about that, everybody. But I'm not in it much because I'm producing and you're um, hosting, Ian, but with a twist I, today. Um, with a little bit of a twist, yes. Yeah, so we shall see how that goes. Great. So remember, uh, everybody watching, uh, write your jokes as the topics go through. Uh, send them all in. Uh, remember to vote. I'm sure Ian will explain it a bit more as we go through. Have a great show uh, and uh, see you in a mo when we come back for the viewer jokes later on. Have a good one, Ian. Yeah. Chop with, well, Sorry, I removed the wrong person. This is not a good start. It's going to get better, trust me. I'm good at this. Let's go. Right. Well, welcome, everyone, to the 30th. I mean, Time flies when you're having pony, eh? without a doubt about it. Um, yeah, well, it's going to be a little bit of a twist this evening. Tony Gardner, yep, we shall definitely have a good one because we've got some great guests on tonight. Um, but let us start um, with introducing you to our regular partner for this evening. It's me. Yes, not only am I presenting, but I'm also going to be telling some puns as well. Um, our love dev and Julian have the night off, so it's down to myself and Rob to hold the fort, and we're going to bring you a great show, but let's introduce you to our first guest, Mr. Roger Swift. Hello, everybody. Hi, Roger. How are we doing? I'm good. I'm very good. Already, already to pun. <laughs> Ready to yeah. pun. That's what we like to hear. And you're happy with the, the subjects that we've got for this yep, evening? Yeah, it was pretty easy, this one. There was only one or two. Was, but yeah. Got loads of props, by the way. Speak for so, yourself, man. I've got yes. loads of props. Here. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, right. Well, have a good one, Roger. We shall go on to our next guest, who is Laura Monmouth. How's it going? Good evening, Laura. Are you okay? Yeah, doing well. Awesome. I'm doing very well. How about yourself? I'm, I'm wonderful. I'm kind of wondering what I'm doing here because I'm not traditionally a pun writer. I mean, uh, I'm, I, I, I kind, I kind of took this on because I want to see if I can come up with a more convoluted setup than Roger. <laughs> <laughs> it's unlikely. I'm going to give well, it a go. Yeah, the challenge has been, the gauntlet has been thrown down. Who will be the most convoluted of our punsters this evening? Could it be Laura, could it be Roger, or could it be our next guest, Ro uh, Richard Pulsford? Good hello. evening, Richard. Hello, hello. Yes. Hi. Oh, we need Hi, more lighting. Richard, how are we doing? It's so dark here in Scotland. <laughs> it is very dark, oh, yeah. And cold. Clock's going back, Clock's going back didn't they? Winter yes. is coming. Winter is coming, without a doubt. Winter is here. Winter sometimes never even leaves this place, to be honest. But, yeah. The nights are fair drawing in. Aye. Sure that's, the last, that's the last Scottish reference that I'll make because no one ever gets them. But anyway, without further ado, are we all ready to yep. pun? Yep. yep. Love the enthusiasm. <laughs> right, well, our, <laughs> our first topic for this evening will be accident and emergency. Okay. Or emergency rooms, a &E, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll go Roger, Laura, Richard, myself, times three. We've got six rounds. This is the first of our six rounds. We do three puns each. Um, so your first a &E pun, please, Mr. Swift. Right, well, I've got loads of really good ones for a &E, so come on, everyone, you better brace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we are. And, 
And it started. <laughs> and it started. Okay, Laura, what have we got? Uh, I, I went to uh, Amy quite recently because I believed that I was an actor who had starred in the films of Dead Zone, King of New York, Pulp Fiction, and Sleepy Hollow. Uh, and I also starred uh, in a Fat Boy Slim video. Um, apparently, I shouldn't have been there, though, so they did send me to the walk-in centre. Oh. <laughs> oh. Good start, good start. Right, Richard, can you keep it up? Oh, cool. yeah. um, and also, have you got a joke yes, for us? Uh, it was a bit embarrassing when I went to A and E. Uh, had to explain, you know, I didn't expect to trip while raking the grass and get the implement stuck up me. But hey ho. <laughs> 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 oh, love it, love it, love it. Right. Well, you know, if you're uh, if you go to A and E and you seem a bit selfish towards the staff, well, you just really need to suit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right, Roger. What have we got? Uh, yeah. What was the next one? Oh, yeah. So try and hide a bit of it off the camera for the punchline. So um, this is a one, two. Three. So this goes all the way up to eleven because this is Spinal Tap. <laughs> spinal Tap. See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Laura, what have we got? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of not wanting to wait syndrome. I, I, I recently suffered uh, from that, and thankfully, when I went to Amy, the, they did admit me as an impatient. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Richard. Yeah, it's NHS 24. They said I should go straight to the hospital with the rash that I described. So I stuffed some pyjamas into my daughter's Minnie Mouse bag and ran. And at the hospital, they said it was the worst case I'd ever seen. <laughs> nice. Right, well, here, in fact, here's one of the Scottish jokes. Um, <laughs> You know, like I, it's ironic that a lot of violent fights start out with the term, I see you, <laughs> and that's where they end up. After getting trolled. <laughs> hey. <laughs> right, Roger, your final joke on e &D. Right, um, so um, I'm just popping up the shop if I want anything. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> and I've still got a Blu-ray as well. I, I mean, thank, God I, thank God I don't have screen stuff. I keep physical copies so I can do that. <laughs> okay, Laura, indeed, can you follow that? Uh, I'm a bit of a computer whiz. So earlier this year, I did hack the computers in my local A&E, specifically uh, in the section that cares for people who go in because they've had an allergic reaction to small peanut butter flavoured candies. Uh, you know the ones I mean. They're the uh, they're the Reese's PCs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Richard, your final joke on A and D. So the patient next to me in A and E, she had a pen stuck up her nose, and she kept asking me, "What are you in for? What are you in for?" And I said, "Look, stop being such a nosy Parker." <laughs> Right, well, finally from me, um, have you heard about the premature ejaculator that got taken into A&E and is now in a coma? Apparently, it's touch and go. Always <laughs> 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 the end of the dirty one. Uh, right, so that is the end of the A&E round. That's the end of our first round. So now it's time for you guys. You guys have been sending in your jokes and droves. Thank you very much. But now it's time to vote via the stream that you're watching. Who do you think has won that round? Was it Roger, Laura, Richard or me? Anyway, vote now and we shall bring back in Rob with some of your jokes. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ian. Yeah, vote now. Uh, and uh, yeah, you just type the name of the person you want to vote for in the uh, Facebook or Twitter, whichever whichever uh, platform you're watching on, just type their name and it all pops up here. Uh, so I'm going to read some of the jokes that you've sent in. Thanks for sending them in. Uh, the first one uh, comes from the wonderful uh, Ian Bowden, who says that hospital equipment comes in packs of five, except the IV. 
<laughs> Very good. Uh, Mark Wilson, my wife texted me and told me she was in casualty. I've watched three series, but I've not seen her yet. Uh, this from Nathan. Say what you like about the NHS, but their transportation has just the right ambience. Very good. <laughs> Uh, ben Emmett, I hate how they shorten the term accident and emergency to A and E. Apparently, the medical term is irritable vowel syndrome. Uh. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, Ian Bowden, they eat strict meals on the wards, but in A and E, they just have a casualty. Uh, and here's a long one that I haven't read in advance, so let's give it a go. Whoa, it's blocked out half your faces. Stevie Vegas says, I ended up in A&E and got sent immediately to get an X-ray of my blood vessels done. As the special dye was being administered, Dirty Den's wife from EastEnders popped in and sung me a song. It was an angiogram. Woof! <laughs> Woof! <laughs> yeah, what? That was exhausting. Uh, I like this one from Ian. There's no point lying to me, doctor. I'll just defibrillate her. Uh, another uh, uh, monstrous one from uh, from Stevie, but that seemed to disappear. There it is. I'm just going to show you the size of it. I'm not going to actually read it. And finally, from Tony, a man was admitted with six plastic horses up his bum, but he's stable. Classic. Classic. Uh, thanks for voting. Um, and uh, let's uh, go back to you, Ian, and see who's won that particular round. Yes, it's a very, very close one. But by my reckoning, I think Laura has taken that round. <laughs> very well done to Laura on a and &E. um, so yeah, thanks all for voting. Thanks all for contributing your jokes. Also, if you could and you don't mind, down the bottom of the screen, um, could help us with a couple of quid via the PayPal or the um, the joke pit link. Just send us a couple of quid if you can. We can upkeep the stream, keep it for free, pay our great guests a couple of quid as well. Um, so anything that you can contribute is much appreciated. And also, if you would like one of these lovely UK pun-off mugs, PayPal is £7.50 or 2 for 15 Special offer this week, as it's our 30th show. Um, leave your name and address, £7.50, for one of these beautiful mugs, and we'll get that out to you. So that's all the, the plugging stuff done. So, why don't we go on to our next round? And our next round is, sticking with the A's, Astronomy. Ooh. Astronomy. So I think we will go with the winner of that round, which was Laura, and then go Richard, Roger, myself, times three. We're going to have some great fun. So, Laura, what have you got on Astronomy? Well, they're remaking a uh, classic 80s sci fi film about this man who gets stuck in a computer simulation, but this time they're setting it somewhere on a hot, large, fiery object in space. Uh, but this time, apparently, Jeff Bridges is unavailable, so they're looking for a new Tron star. <laughs> That's me needing to write another joke there. <laughs> I'd only had three. Ah, right. <laughs> so, Richard, what have we got for astronomy? Yeah, there's going to be a spaceport built in Flanders. So, who can fly me to the moon? Yeah, it's Franks in Artois. <laughs> Right, well, do you know which ex-US president would win a war in outer space? Ronald Reagan. <laughs> okay, Roger, what have we got? Sorry, it's, it's all right. Uh, I think I can see Boris Johnson in my next-door neighbour's garden. Sorry, it's just my observatory. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Laura, you're second. Here. Okay, um, if I had to give magazines a rating for their space-related content, I'd probably give The Sky at Night a 10, All About Space at 8, Space and Time I'd probably give a 5, and I'd probably give Cosmo Nought. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, Richard, what have we got? Uh, this, this is the worst one. Um, apparently, <laughs> the, apparently the first manned spacecraft to circle the moon was made in Naples. I know this because I once asked Star Trek Scotty which one it was, and he said it was near Apollo 10. <laughs> Shoe on a little. <laughs> well, yeah, it's going to be less shoehorned than my third joke's going to be, because I still don't know what that is. Um, right, but my, my second joke would be 
there was a huge jacked up rock flying about outer space. It was asteroid. <laughs> but you know what? That's, but it is quite an ass assumption to say it was on steroids, though. It might just have been a big meat eater. <laughs> Okay, Roger, what have we got? All right, this won't be as funny as that falling down, but um, okay, we've got. Um, <clears throat> I'm completely mental, I live on the moon. Oh, watch out, he's a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Laura, your last joke on astronomy. Oh, God, content warning. Uh, I love the names we give to constellations because decades ago we started using like the Plow, the Big Dipper and the Great Bear to describe Ursa Major. Uh, whereas back in the 80s we gave the name fucking Thatcher uh, to the constellation Cursa Minor. <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> okay, Richard. Uh, a newspaper once ran a series of articles by Stephen Hawking on underwear through the ages. It was called The Times History of Briefs. <laughs> Quality punish indeed. Love that. <laughs> right. Um, where do... What planet... <laughs> See, that's completely off the cuff. <laughs> I could have used the meat eater bit for joke three, but hey, -ho, um, completely winging it. Um, where do, what's the best planet to download music from? Neptune's. Fuck it. Roger. <laughs> okay, then. Right. This is stretching it, but it counts. Okay. Um, the force is strong. Pardon? I said the force is strong. What did you just say? That's the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> okay that is us on astronomy so wow indeed and um, so vote now who has won that round was it myself was it roger was it laura was it Richard? get your votes in roger's away for a little constitutional um, and we'll bring uh rob back in to read some of your puns wow what a round, literally <laughs> out there. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, this one from Mark. Thanks, Mark, for sending this in. Buzz Aldrin accidentally trapped Neil Armstrong's fingers in the rocket door. It's okay, though. He apologised. So that's all right, then. Uh, ben Emmett, when I was younger, I ate too many Milky Ways and I spent ages on the toilet. It gave me terrible constellation. <laughs> uh, one from Colm here. A division of the FBI lost a NASA spacecraft, and all they did was say sorry. A spokesman for NASA said, you owe us more than Apollo, G. Yeah, it's G. This is mate. Uh, Tony Gardner, <laughs> what's a light year? It's the same as a regular year, just less calories. Thank you. Uh, and uh, this from Ben Emmett, as soon as we perfect commercial space travel, there'll be pilots offering skywriting services. I'm sure of it. It's written in the stars. Uh, Stevie <laughs> Vegas, when I told my parents I'd bought them a holiday to outer space, they were over the moon. Uh, and uh, let's go with this one to end from Ben Emmett. I have a model spaceman in my garden. I love a bit of astronomy. <laughs> astronomy. Whew. Well played, guys. Uh, keep those votes coming in. Uh, I think, um, uh, we, should we uh, go to the little vid, uh, Ian, just before we um, get, get to the results? Yeah, why not? Give it, a, give it a few more seconds for people to send stuff in. 30 Ooh, second break, cool. here we go. He gave us a signal. <laughs> Boom, it really is as simple as that. Uh, well played. Thanks for sending your votes in. Back to you, Ian. Let's find out who's won this round. Oh, four, six. oh it is so close. It is so close. I just need to double check this. Three, four, five, six for Laura. Um, Roger has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So by one vote, Roger has won that round. Very, very close. Very, very close. Um, but that was a cracking round. I absolutely loved that. But 
without further ado, let's crack on to our next one, which is breakfast. Breakfast. So in keeping with tradition, we shall start with the winner of that round, which is Roger. And then I think we'll go anti-clockwise this time. So Roger, myself, Richard, Laura, times three. Take it <coughs> Roger. Okay, so um, I'd like to propose a toast. <laughs> Darling, will you marry me? <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. I'm not really going to marry a piece of toast. I'll never get my fingers burnt. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know that um, I once saw a tissue fondling a crumpet. Just about hanky panky. <laughs> right, Richard. On Breakfast TV's Good Morning Britain, Roland Osterbal uh, and Kurt Smith sang about the new system of COVID alert levels to the host. It was tears for peers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Laura, what we got? Okay, well, I just want to show you something actually, because I've got this, which is uh, a tub of hot chocolate strapped to a uh, a box of cereal, and I don't know why I'm showing you this, but it's just one of my cocoa props. So, hey! <laughs> <laughs> I hate oh, you. that gets the Roger seal of approval. I hate you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Roger, what have you got for your second breakfast? Party? Oh yeah, so um, <clears throat> I mean, I've, I've done a lot of things in my time. I mean, I like having a baked beans on toast for dinner and um, tea, but the other day I, I tried putting it on him. Um, I tried having it for breakfast, and it was a really terrible idea in hindsight. <laughs> I had to get in there. <laughs> right, well, everyone else in Ms. Fitzgerald's household had chocolate spread on their toast for breakfast, but not Ella. <laughs> okay, Richard. If you're unsure which dairy products to have with your breakfast, just go with Yogurt Instinct. <laughs> <laughs> Quality punish indeed. Uh, Laura, what have we got? Um, well, I'm sure we all remember the uh, former Prime Minister, the one before Boris, Theresa, you, you know her, but I, I saw her recently in a back alley in the street handing out bowls of Rice Krispies in exchange for wads of cash from kids, which sounds really, really weird. But when you think about it, it's fine because breakfast is the most important deal of the May. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we love some <laughs> spinnerisms here. Right, Roger, what have we got? Your last joke on breakfast. So um, one thing I really like doing for breakfast, uh, on toast for breakfast, actually, is I really like having cheese on toast for breakfast. And I'm sure everybody loves cheese, don't they? They all love cheese. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run away from you. That's the greatest game. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay then. Um, right, my, last, my mother's mother is Spanish. Um, and when she came round to our house and asked me what kind of cereal bar I'd like for breakfast, well, I mean, naturally, the first thing that I said was granola. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's Spanish, you see. Anyway, Richard. Nice. Uh, what's the most popular breakfast food in the Netherlands? Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. Laura, you're our the last joke on breakfast. Well, this is going to sound controversial, but my favourite breakfast item is actually baby feet. I don't know if you tried it, but it's lovely. Uh, and I highly recommend a nice bowl of Wheatos. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> that's us on the breakfast puns. Beautiful viewers, you've been sending in your jokes by the dozen, it seems. But time to vote. Who has won that round? Was it myself? Was it Roger? Was it Richard? Was it Laura? Get your votes in now and we'll go back to Rob with your jokes. Yes, indeed. And don't forget that the best viewer submitted pun of the night wins a fridge magnet. It's reminding you of it down there because it's a fact. 
the fridge magnet will make its way to your fridge. If you own a fridge, I mean, I don't want to assume everyone's got a fridge, but if you own a fridge, this magnet will stick to it. Uh, but it has to be fridges. It's not just a generic metal magnet. It's very, very specific. Thank you, Nathan, for this joke. Kellogg's have launched a retro radio station on the AM band. The quality is so bad. All you can hear is snap, crackle, and pop. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Ian Bowden, what did Luke Goss say to Matt Goss for buying him breakfast? <laughs> I owe you muffin, yeah, muffin at all. That's what he said. Uh, ben Emmett, the SS Hovis sang in a sea of porridge. It was a bready wreck. Come on. <laughs> I'm enjoying that one. I know spoonerisms. You love them or you love them or hate them. I love them. Thank you for that. Stevie with his biggies, the Danish pastry and apple factories without adequate barriers to prevent their workers falling in. <gasps> are likely to experience a large turnover of staff. Thank you very much, Stevie. Mark Wilson, I nearly drowned when I fell into a bowl of muesli. I was pulled under by the strong currents. <laughs> uh, Tony, uh, what do snowmen like for breakfast? Ice Krispies. That one's straight from the uh, cracker menu, but we like it. Ben once had a tug of war with a string of sausages. It was a pull English. <laughs> and finally, to end this bit of uh, viewer submissions, I'm going to go for. I'm looking for someone I haven't uh, haven't mentioned yet. I'm going to go with Leighton L. Barb's Barber. What does Elton John sing at breakfast? <laughs> Don't go bacon my heart. I couldn't if I fried. I got two chances to sing in that round, so I'm a happy man. Uh, is that all I do? That's it, isn't it? Keep the votes coming in. Back to you, Ian, to find out who has won. Well, for the second time this evening, that round goes to Laura. Was pretty close between Laura and Richard, but Laura snuck it yet. All those folks coming in for Laura. And yeah, there's one for Richard from our from our very own love dev. He's managed to glad that he's watching. Glad that he's watching. Um, right, so round number yeah, what is this? Four? Five, seven, I don't know. Well, the round that it is is going to be Christianity. Oh, God. Christianity. Right. So um, I think we will start with Richard this time and then go anti clockwise. So, Richard, Laura, Roger, myself, take it away, Richard. Uh, my religious friend thinks Jesus turned water into chamomile tea. Well, that's just her beliefs. <laughs> okay, Laura. Um, I've actually just picked up a copy of the Bible from the floor, so I want to read you a couple of my favourite Bible passages, if I can, just to get us through this. Uh, this one's a nice one right here. It's a uh, and on the third day, God said, "Let there be a chess piece shaped like a castle, and let it be bestowed to a progressive rock band," which is a lovely quote from the uh, Rook of Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Roger, what have we got? Right, um, I'm going to read from the Bible as well. Um, <laughs> it's a different part, it's not the same one, don't worry. I thought it might be, but it's different. Right, so, um, it, right, uh, in the beginning, God, 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 in the God created the, 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 the uh, and the, sorry, I can't make out any of this. I can't make out any of this holy Bible. <laughs> Never to a better way. <laughs> well, do you know the guy that uh, crucified Jesus? He was actually doing a kind of yoga whilst he was doing it. Yeah. It was Pontius Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know. I know, Rob. <laughs> okay, Richard. Yeah, this is a wow one as well. Um, I accidentally dropped my deli shopping during the mass. And the priest admonished me for swearing and made me clear up the mess. All four cheeses wept. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A shake of the head from Laura. <laughs> no, you feel. <laughs> what have we got? Um, head, heading back to the exciting Bible uh, for, for a second. Um, and thus suffering from toothache, Jesus sat nervously in the chair while the dentist injected his mouth with Novocaine. And that one's a lovely quote from the uh, book of Numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Shake my head for that one. 
Okay, Roger. Right, you're going to know where this is going, Laura. Uh, this is a joke. That, um, well, it's going to offend some people. It really will offend some people. I swear to God. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> 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 Not from Sistine Chapel, right? I'm right. <laughs> That's for me, all right? Yeah, we're all going to the fire now. Thanks, Roger. <laughs> um, okay, well, how do you know that Adam and Eve were mad ravers? Because they'd never leave their Eden. <sighs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> sure. What have we got, Richard? A thin pope can't live in Rome, but a fatty can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Laura. Well, we know one of the most famous Christians was Mother Teresa, but I don't know if you're aware that Mother Teresa was actually addicted to playing cards, particularly the game Solitaire. Um, I actually once watched her play Solitaire for twelve whole hours. Uh, eventually, I got bored and I had to take a I had to take a cards offer. Um, I had the patience of a saint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Roger, what have we got? Okay, convoluted alert. Here we go. <laughs> so, um, Nick Kershaw, right? 1980s pop star. If you don't know who he is, Google the name of his biggest hit. It's the punchline. So, Nick Kershaw, right? He received a phone call from God that told him the Trinity was going to come down and give him oral sex. He said, look, God, I'm fine with having sex with the Father. I'm fine with having oral sex with the Holy Spirit, but I won't let the sun go down on me. <laughs> we are definitely going to the fire. <laughs> I'm proud of that one. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, <clears throat> right, well, lastly in this round, um, from myself, um, have you heard about the new Jesus crisps? Apparently they're quite savoury. <laughs> <laughs> so who has won the Christianity round? Was it Roger, Laura, Richard or myself? Get your votes in now while we go back to Rob with some of your jokes that you've been sending in. Oh, yes, this was an interesting one. So thank you, Stevie Vegas. When I want to see how many ministers I'm passing in my car, I use the rev counter. That's nice. Ben Emmett, uh, you can now get an electronic version of the Bible from Amazon. It's really helped rekindle my faith. Lovely. Uh, Jesus never finishes his pint before closing time. He's always the last... Wow. Oh, Supper. Uh, <laughs> Colum, John Bon Jovi built his house on a Wikipedia it, Breviary's book. That's why he sings Living on a Prayer. Yeah, it's kind of almost <laughs> factual, that one. Um, and Nathan has a very serious point. If you say that all Christians hold exactly the same interpretation of the Bible, I think you're being ecumenical with the truth, if I'm honest. That would be uh, ethical, Mark thinks, if anyone wants an ark, I know a guy. <laughs> uh, what do you call a... <laughs> what I love a good what do you call a joke. What do you call a baptised Mexican? A bean dip. Because he has. Uh, this one I really like from Taco Mania on, uh, on Twitter. He says, hi. Hi, Taco. And then four minutes later he says, I have a question. And then the actual question, which is, can you see the chat? <laughs> so I can officially confirm to you, Taco Mania 444, we can. Thanks, Leighton Barber, for this. Samson was the biggest and best comedian. He brought the house down. And this from my brother, Andy. Thanks for watching, Andy, my next-door neighbour. She's always miraculously giving birth to Edam, Cheshire, Cheddar, Stilton, Baby Bell, Merry Mother of Cheeses. <laughs> He's good. He's a bit, bit too good, to be honest, Andy. Can you just tone it down? Thanks. Uh, and uh, one more from, I think, uh, from... Uh, uh, you know what? Let's just do another one for my brother. Had a mate who always slept in. Getting him out of bed was like raising the dead. <laughs> Lazy Russ. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, one for those with a bit of a uh, bit of biblical knowledge about uh, the uh, the dead ones that rose. Um, uh, lovely. There we go. Uh, we're going to find out in a second. Keep your votes coming in, people. Uh, we're just going to have a quick thirty second break, and then we'll we'll get back to finding out who has won this particular round. Check it out. It can't be. What is it? It can't be. What did you do, Ray? Oh, shit. It's the Stay Pun Marshmallow Man. <laughs> Thank you.
go for it, Ian. Tell us how we've got on. Yeah, I think it was a bit of a landslide, that one. Um, Richard took that round. Very well done to Good. Richard. Some top quality punnage in there. Top quality punnage, without a doubt. But let's get on to the next round, which is sitcoms. <coughs> sitcoms. No, before we get into sitcoms, if you just remember, if you could uh, spare us a couple of quid, um, the links are below, they're in the, the streams, they're on our Facebook pages. Fire us a couple of quid, help keep the stream free, get some of these quality punsters a couple of quid in their pocket for their giving us, giving us their time for being on and writing some great jokes. Um, so yeah, do that via PayPal. If you fancy a mug, £7.50. Um, leave your name and address, you'll get a UK pun off mug to you. And of course... The best pun of the night from you guys, the viewers, wins a UK pun off fridge magnet. But anyway, on to what you're here for. Not me shilling out all this stuff. <clears throat> Let's go with Roger, then Laura, then Richard, then myself on the topic of sitcoms. So take it away, Roger. So um, my friend says to me quite recently, he said, Roger, I think I've got the ghost of Ronnie Barker haunting my fridge because every night he comes around and opens up all my tins of porridge. I said, send him around to my house. He can open all hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Laura. Okay, um, well, I've got three jokes, obviously, uh, and I kind of ranked them. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm probably going to put Mark <laughs> in the table. And then we'll probably, we'll all end in cheers, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Richard. I'm writing a sitcom about some unemployed Geordie clowns going into the funeral trade. It's called Only Fools and Hearses. <laughs> uh, right, okay, for me, um, when I was travelling in Bulgaria, I once spent a night in Sofia. Blanche, Dorothy and Rose were furious. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be honest, it's still getting hard thinking about it. <laughs> anyway, Roger. Right, another convolu convolution alert. Here we go. <laughs> so, um, that was on this nudist beach in Miami, and I saw the actor Christopher Barry bent over, and this American guy points and says, Hey, Britta! So I said, yeah, but more people remember him as Rimmer. <laughs> 90s sitcom knowledge required. <laughs> okay, Laura. Off the back of Rogers there. Uh, well, a friend once challenged me uh, to name any sitcom starring the actor Joe McGann. And initially I couldn't think of any, but eventually I got the upper hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Richard. I'm writing a sitcom about a Swede who inherits a large country estate. It's called To the Manor Bjorn. <laughs> Don't watch it. Good heart. I think you need to be of a certain vintage to know a lot of these jokes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am. Um, right, well, from myself, um, Peter Capaldi's character in the thick of it was always messing about with an absorbent powder. He was a talcum mucker. <laughs> 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 okay, and lastly for um, for us going round, Roger. Right, so um, I went to this fancy dress party, and my mate was at this fancy dress party, and he was dressed as a bank bolt. I said, I thought you were coming dressed as a Ronnie Corbett sitcom. He said, I thought I better be safe than sorry. <laughs> Vintage. <laughs> okay, Laura, what have we got? I have struggled with this with this topic. Um, personally, I don't have a favourite Raymond Allen sitcom, but some others do have them. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, what have you got? I'm writing a sitcom uh, about three hard-up accident-prone farmers who use their all-terrain vehicle to sell off their remaining pigs. It's called Last of the Hummer Swine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, well, lastly, from me, um, Baldrick from Blackadder loves this show and all of his mates contribute as well. well he does say, I have a punning clan. 
<laughs> Nobody did American ones. So. <laughs> Right, so vote now. Who has won this round? Was it myself, Roger, Richard, or Laura? Get your votes in, and we shall go to Rob with some of your jokes. We certainly shall. Uh, let's have a biggie from Stevie Vegas. Now that the government expects everyone in the entertainment industry to change our jobs, I was thinking of learning to work behind the scenes on a space-themed sitcom. Hashtag rethink, reskill, redwarf. <laughs> Red or <laughs> okay. Very good. Uh, now one from my favourite, uh, well, my joint favourite name, uh, which is uh, Craig Stainrod. Um, with uh, I know my friends say I'm obsessed with sitcoms because I keep telling I'm not going out. I can't argue though because I might be outnumbered. Nice. Um, Mark Wilson. There's a new sitcom made about Jesus. It's good. I've just seen the pilot. Nice. Very good. Spans a couple of our themes there. Well played, Mark. Doubling up. Uh, from Jessica Roberts, the previous guest on the show, Amy Farrah Fowler was on the Big Band Theory. She really did blossom. I feel that needs some uh, <laughs> extra knowledge about that show, but I'm happy to, to put it on here. And here's another one about the same show from John Carruthers. My TV exploded whilst I was watching Netflix. It's given me the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, that's good. Ben Emmett, the rerun of One Foot in the Grave has been postponed. I can't reprieve it. <laughs> Wow. Uh, apparently, on the similar subject, Victor Meldrow is impotent. He can't conceive it. Uh, the, uh, there's a new sitcom about the origin of marijuana, the Big Bong Theory. They just keep coming, don't they? Smoke me a kipper, says Jodie Flint. I have no idea what that means. Here's my brother, Andy Thomas. Love the show featuring three kids, well, two kids and a sliced up half eaten child corpse, 2.4 children. So if they only they weren't so literal. Uh, Stevie Vegas um, is uh, currently developing a sitcom about a murder in an airport, just shooting the pilot. So that's uh, another one uh, about. The pilots. And uh, here's another one from Steve. I keep dropping my sitcom strips whenever I visit the broadcasting companies. I'm hoping someone will pick it up soon. Oh, my gosh. Um, and finally, from uh, my, uh, from Andy Thomas again, as a doctor, I kept having to give 30 minutes to the guy with his fingers poking out of his boxer shorts. I used to call it Handcock's Half Hour. A rude one there from Andy Thomas. Uh, so lovely stuff. We're going to go to a 30-second break, and then we'll find out uh, how that round has gone. You know what? Let's have a bit of Scarface. Fun. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, we've definitely lost um, uh, what we once had. Uh, and his name is Richard. So let's see if he comes back. But, uh, you know, maybe I can jump in and improv, uh, Ian, if we get to that point. So see how we go. Back to you, Ian. Right. Well, the winner of that round, despite a little bit of a late flurry, was me. Hey! <laughs> um, yeah, it was very close between myself and Richard for that one. Hey, Richard, good to have you back. Hey, I haven't to use my phone because I've lost the internet. Ah, right, no worries at all, man. Just glad to have you back. Um, I just announced that, um, that you'd nearly won that round for the second time, but oh. me and my vote fiddling counting meant that I won that round. So going into the final round, it's all to play for. <laughs> Um, myself, Richard and Roger are on one apiece and Laura is on two. So what could be the next topic? I wonder, I wonder. Wales. Wales, 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 Wales. So I think we'll go with myself, then Roger, Laura, Richard. So take it away me. Um, right, da, da 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 There's a guy in North Wales that needs to stop taking ecstasy. Yeah, completely wrecks him. <laughs> Roger. Right. So, um, trying to remember which one I was going to do first. Right. Yes. So, um, this Welsh guy said to me the other day, and it's a terrible Welsh accent. He said to me, "You know, Roger, in Wales, <laughs> there's a village." called Vaughan, but all the people who live there know that it exists. I guess it takes Vaughan to know Vaughan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Laura, I could chew on that. 
<laughs> Gino. Good God. <laughs> Wales or Germany, that joke could have fit it in. Okay, Laura, what have we got on well, Wales? You'll, you'll notice right here I've actually written uh, the words Dancing Queen uh, right there, but they're, they're in Welsh, uh, so that's uh, that's Dancing Queen. Um, so that's actually my ABBA wrist width. I had that one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Richard, what have we got on wheels? Yeah, if you're unsure what to call my one-piece pyjama suit or the Welsh city it comes from, it's a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my onesie joke not getting done then. Um, Ray, from myself, um, I met some people in South Wales that decorate their hearts with jewellery, their spleens with glitter, and they're lovers with the finest dresses that money can buy. They go for the glam organs. <laughs> um, Roger. Right, we... Laura, you, you give, I, was, I was going to do have a wrist with, so I'll have to do a niche one because I haven't got anything else. Um, I met the doctor the other day. But it was the David Tennant one for the sake of this pun. And <laughs> I met him the other day and he said, I can't talk for long. I'm off to see the Manor Street Preachers in concert. I said, nice. You're taking one of your companions. He said, well, Rose is in the hospital. <laughs> Wikipedia it. They've got a song called Rose. <laughs> okay, right. One of my favourite Manic songs as well, man. <laughs> got it, see? Uh, Brett, Laura, what have we got? Well, on? We've all seen these news stories about people who marry random stuff like trees and buildings and stuff. But there's a guy in Wales recently uh, who was refused a license to marry his local river. I mean, you shouldn't feel sorry for him. It's just tough love. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Richard, what have we got? Yeah, I saw this documentary on marine conservation and apparently it's going quite well. Uh, if you had to gather together all the will largest sea mammals they'd be the size of whales <laughs> <laughs> right lastly from myself um so what was it that you did to the button to gain access to the north wales seaside town well i just pressed that in <laughs> <laughs> So, Roger, what have right. we got? <laughs> Two on the same theme, but Laura took one. Right, so my, my mate said to me quite recently, he said, Roger, I'm gonna, you know where this is going, Laura. He said, I'm going to sell off all my old Britpop CDs. I said, what, you're selling Oasis? He said, yes, I'm selling everything. I said, what, you're selling Blur? He said, yes, I'm going to sell all of them. I said, what, even the Manic Street Preachers? He said, yes, everything must go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, watching. <laughs> <laughs> it counts. Now, a bit of a confession, I've actually been looking up breast enlargement online for various reasons, and it turns out that the only one that's vaguely local was in Wales. So I went onto the website and I got fascinated by the Welsh language because I love the Welsh language because of all of like the, 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 they put two letters together, which is always fun. And I found out through this website that the Welsh for uh, breast enlargement. I'll, I'll spell it for you. Uh, it's E H A N G U R. Then there's a space. Then it's F R O N. Uh, and then right at the end, there's a double D. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Richard, what have we got? Uh, final joke of the night on wheels. Ooh. Yeah, when the King of Mercia told his people he could build a big, beautiful wall on the border and the Welsh are going to pay for it. They realised this was a really special offer. Offer. King of Mercia. <laughs> it's a niche one. <laughs> I don't get it. Really. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikipedia. Wikipedia, um, yeah. Offers Dyke. Come on. <laughs> Right, well, that's us done for the Round on Wales and for the show special offer. Um, so vote for who you think has won that round. Was it Roger, myself, Richard or Laura? Vote now and we'll bring back in our lovely Rob with some of your jokes. Yes, get the votes in, people. 
uh, one of these isn't so much a vote as more a challenge to me, which uh, I thought I would create a joke containing the longest place name in the world just to see you have a go 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 at reading it out. So stick that up your pipe and smoke it, Stevie. So stick it. There we go. It's one of my two uh, one of my two other languages that I speak. Uh, Craig Stainrod, my wife said she wanted to go somewhere in Wales. I said, you better think carefully. <laughs> Ian Bowden, can you write down the name of this Welsh town for me? Pembroke? No, no, I just lost it. Can you write it down? <laughs> uh, ben Emmett, in Wales, they make cars that last, and they have named the latest model after a national treasure. The Shirley Bassey comes with a burly chassis. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Colm, well, I once went out with a Welsh girl who had 38 DDs. Don't think I ever pronounced her name right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ian Bowden, where's the best place to have a good morning in Wales, son? On the border, da. Border, da. Border, da. Nearly. Um, my brother telling me that's the best accent ever. Thanks, bro. Uh, it's Welsh Club here on the UK pun off. Um, John Carruthers, I'm sorry, mate. It's been done. Eating it carefully. Uh, Tony Gardiner, I used to date a Welsh girl who had a 36. What? What is all this with flipping bra sizes? Move on. Leighton Els Barber, 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 Barber. Just seen a new Welsh Oasis tribute act. They started with Don't Look Back in Banger. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Andy, guy in the Welsh capital, keeps paying well over the odds for clapped out secondhand cars. Total Cardiff. <laughs> Cardiff. Don't get that one. And that's it. Uh, that's it from uh, from mm. all of your all of the viewers. I am going to award uh, the fridge magnet for the best joke of the night to now sue me, attack me if you want, but are going to give it to my own brother to. Uh, <laughs> Andy Thomas, for two reasons. <laughs> Firstly, his joke ages ago about all the cheeses, where he said it was cheeses. I can't remember. Um, I can't find the exact one. Uh, was it that one? My next door neighbour, always miraculously giving birth to Edom, Cheshire, Cheddar, Stilton, Baby Bell, Mary, mother of cheeses. I'm going to give it him for that for two reasons. Firstly, I like that joke. And secondly, pretty much everyone else has won before. So uh, we want to we evenly distribute the prizes. And on those two meritocratic reasons andy you are tonight's winner thanks for sending your jokes in everybody as you can tell everyone will be a winner at some point on this show even taco mania 444 with his classic can you see chat uh, i love the fact it hasn't got the chat it's just can you see chat i like it well that's the thing because funnily enough my um, kitten is called taco whoa he is a maniac um, there might be something about him being French, so it might not be chat, it might be chat, as in, I see. But unless he's, yeah, yeah, unless in his under one year of life he's learned how to use a computer, yeah, that's the bit that mm, probably not him. Call me a conspiracy theorist nut, but that's the bit that I'm not sure about. Uh, oh gosh, now I've got Stevie asking my mum what I said in English <laughs> after I pronounced, oh gosh, sorry everyone. It'll be a while before Wales comes around again on the uh, on the topics. And my brother's telling me that it was about Cardiff. I didn't get the total car bit, though. <sighs> Mark, is there going to be a podcast? Yes, we put it up there, don't we, Ian? We do indeed. That will be available probably tomorrow morning, as well as, well, we'll see if we do a, a bonus show. I'm not sure. Probably will at some point. Because there have been loads of great jokes been sent in. Loads of great jokes. Um, but yeah, is there any other votes coming in? Because at the moment it is a tie between myself and Laura. So just another couple of seconds to get the votes in, or we could go for a tiebreaker. What do you think, Rob? Uh, I think that as we have two minutes left, it has to be a tiebreaker. You can lead on it. Da, da, da. Right, let's see then. Um, 
Right, the first director of the FBI was from South Wales, Tredgar Hoover. Tredgar, Tredgar. Yeah. yeah. Right, um, who else is in the tiebreaker? Was it Laura? Laura. Uh, so, Laura, you have to come up with another one on the topic of Wales. Should have explained the rules. <laughs> this yeah, is the tiebreaker. Um, have you got another one? Yeah, I got them. Oh. Um, might just need five seconds to actually think of it. Um, That's but all yes, right. Um, so uh, I was asking a, a, a Welsh singer uh, exactly how I should use public transportation around South Wales. Uh, and she told me, taxi. So I said, well, sure, sh surely, surely, bussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Laura's won that. <laughs> well, I think, uh, I think, uh, I mean, Andy voted for her even before she'd said anything. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, they're flooding in. Look, they're flooding in. Look, you know, Tony's like, look, good show, guys. You know, it's, it's the, I love the finality of this. You know, good show, guy. It's over, though. Laura's win. Laura's win. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right, Tony. And you look like the kind of guy who, if you tell me Laura's won, she's won. Uh, and, um, and Steve is keeping the tradition going by voting uh, for... Nathan, who was on <laughs> three weeks ago. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well done, Laura, on that one. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll hand over to you, Ian, to, uh, to wrap things up, and I'll go back to pressing buttons. See yeah, all. cheer, Rob, cheer, Rob. Wow, that's the UK pun-off, number 30. Cannot believe that we have done 30 shows. And here's to another 30 as well. So thank you very much to Roger, Richard, and very well done to Laura, who won three of the rounds. The rest of us got one each, so very well done. Your debut on the show couldn't have gone much better, eh? Um, so, Roger, have you got anything that you're wanting to plug, or anything that you've got coming up? Um, I'll do the same thing. What I know Laura's going to plug is um, I, I've got a Twitch channel now, which is, um, if you've on Twitch, it's Roger Swift 1983 <laughs> And I have very crap speedrun attempts at Mortal Kombat for the Super Nintendo and play Mario Kart Wii tracks and talk bollocks over them. <laughs> so I'll put that <laughs> else to watch. I've also got a YouTube channel where I review retro music from the past, which is on YouTube, Retro Music Review UK. Cool. Nice one. Richard, have you got anything coming up? Anything you want to plug? I'm coming up, um, but I do have a podcast and you can look at some previous episodes. Um, so that's It Just So Happened. Um, you can find that on Twitter at it just so one, and it's a mixture of history and comedy. Brilliant, Thanks. nice one. Definitely check that one out. <clears throat> and tonight's winner, Laura Monmouth. Very well Woo! done once more. Anything that you're wanting to plug? Yeah, because all I'm doing at the moment is I'm on Twitch, which is why I just changed my name, and Roger's now copying me. So uh, it's easier <laughs> to just like remember this down here. Uh, this is like the actual. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm on there. Uh, I don't make that many jokes on there, but I'm currently trying to be a Super Mario uh, original Super Mario Brothers, effectively world record. That's what I'm doing. I'm a speedrunner. Woo! There you go. <laughs> That's my life now. Okay, well, thank you all for, for coming on. We'll certainly be getting you on again if you are up for it. Yep. Um, for myself, Buzzword is happening this Tuesday. If you like winning money just by listening to comedy, check out at UK Buzzwords on Facebook. But yeah, from Roger, Richard, Laura and myself, we'll see you next week. Bye. Remember, give us a couple of quid as well. Thank you, guys. Bye.